Good day, Fred friends. New project today. Um, very, very nice guitar. I only get some very, very nice guitars, it seems, doesn't it? Uh, but let me show you this one. And no faffing about, and you'll think, oh, wrong way around. Well, you know, it's not the wrong way around. It's a left handed guitar. And it is. You, would you be in any doubt at all? It is a Gibson standard. What a beautiful, beautiful guitar. But it does have a couple of problems. Beautiful looking thing. Look at that. Look at that. Just look at it. Absolutely beautiful. Fantastic looking guitar. Um, the first appearances, you're thinking, wow, brilliant. So what's wrong with it? Well, nothing majorly wrong with it. Uh, it's an American Les Paul standard. So it being a standard, it has binding and nibs. The frets are pretty flat compared to the frets I normally get in or on other guitars. They do this with nibs, they always have a slightly flatter fret, where most of them have got a good crown on them like that. We go a little bit flatter on these. Uh, to absolute pain in the butt to refret if you're not going to remove the nibs. Most of these guitars I get that want to refret do have the nibs removed or remove the nibs anyway. This is not coming for a refret though. This is coming because two reasons. One, one, it's a new, it's, it's a brand new purchase uh, of a client of mine. It's not a brand new guitar. I know he got this for a decent price, but it does have problems, and problems are being three inlays have raised up, and that's because the glue has come undone. Not because, well, not for any other reason than that. So what I need to do is, I need to get some glue underneath to glue them back in, and that is not easy at all. You can use super glue and it will draw itself in, but then it means you've got clean up afterwards. So what I think I'm gonna do is, I'm probably gonna try, I'm gonna try and steam the three inlays out and I'm going to put them back in and clamp them and glue them back in and clamp them. I can first try and get some super glue to draw in there and get them clamped anyway, but I think that's going to be quite messy. I hate super glue with a passion. I really do not like it at all. So I'm thinking, hopefully, I'm, I'm probably going to try and steam them out using an old soldering iron. Uh, I want to get some damp cloth over this, a damp rag, and we'll steam, try and steam them out. What that could do though is it could melt. Especially if these are plastic, which I think they are, it could melt the plastic, it could warp and bend them even worse than they are. So it's not guaranteed to work. Um, I've already explained to the owner that I may need to go and re just replace the inlays, which will mean a couple of things. When I do put them in, I'm going to have to file them to shape uh, to get them back in. That still may be the easiest solution. I mean, these are protruding. It's these two, this one and this one. And you'll get more of an idea when I get the strings off, which I'm going to do. It's also coming for a regular setup. It's just going to have a bog standard setup. Well, there's nothing bog standard about the setups I do. It's going to have a player setup, which is uh, everything done bar fret leveling and electric uh, electric replacement or whatever. If we need any electrics doing or any frets uh, working on, up to five frets are included in an intensive setup, which will cost you twenty-five pounds more. But all being well, we won't need to do any of that. It's just going to need a setup. I'm going to replace the inlays. I've already given him a price with the inlays, not the inlay replacement, but the inlays have been fixed. I'm charging him one hour's work for that. So I'm going to see how it goes on. I'm just going to check the setup now. I'm going to do it off camera. Uh, then I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you close up uh, how these inlays are protruding. If we can get some glue under there, it'd be, be a lot easier fix. But I'm going to show you the problem with the two inlay, well the three inlays, but one at this far end is not so bad. It, and we could probably just get away with just filing that. Um, and we will go across with a fret rocker, check that all the frets are level. If they are, it will be quite a, well, it won't be simple, it won't be basic, but it'll be an easier um, job all round. Biggest concern is, well, can I get these inlays out clean and can I get them back in? If I can get them out clean, I'll have no problem getting them back in and getting them uh, glued down properly. But I'll show you how I combat that particular battle uh, when I get to it. So give me a few minutes. Um, I will get the strings off and I will come back and we'll see where we're going to proceed from there. So, a couple of things. And before I mention the couple of things, um, it's common knowledge that I like to do the setup on the guitar with the old strings on just to check that everything's right and how it should be. And, and that normally means the action, the truss rod, and the intonation. Now the intonation is out all across the board. I've just done these three strings, uh, and I'm gonna do these three, but I'm gonna show you where we are. And G, G string. 
The 12th fret is way, way sharp. Now, when it's sharp, I remember which way to move it is. If it's sharp, which is five letters, I need to move the saddle to the right, which is away, lengthen the string length. Um, if it's flat, I go to the left. And where I remember is sharp, right are both five letters, and left, flat are both four letters. So if it's flat, we go left. If it's sharp, we go right, and that's with the saddle. So I already know that the 12th note, the 12th, the 12th fretted note is sharp, so I need to move the saddle, I need to lengthen the string. If I, if I can at all, and I can. And I'm about to do every one, the intonation is out all across the board. Still a little bit sharp. So I'm going to write just that little bit more. And that's as much as it will go, so I can't do anything. Should just be spot on. G, 12th fret. Perfect. B string. Still a little bit sharp. Same again, we'll just lengthen the saddle. Like I say, something I do with the old strings on. It doesn't mean I won't check the intonation again with new strings on. B. Perfect. Sharp again. What we can do is if we don't have enough adjustment on one saddle, for instance, what we could do is we could try and remove a saddle and turn it round. You can do that on some I don't think you can do it on this bridge, so we have to go as far as we can, which we have done. Twelfth rep. And that's it, we are in. B. G. D. A. E. And that is the intonation set. Now I will check that again with new strings later. So what we're doing now is already looking at the knot. Some of these slots are not very well cut at all. You're really being held in by a tiny bit. These could quite easily slip. It won't take anything to make these slip. So I'm going to check the slot height. I think these strings are a little bit too high, so we're going to cut these slots a little bit deeper. Something I'm going to do later, I will do all this when I get the guitar back together in a bit. So what I'm going to do now is, now I've set the intonation, I'm going to remove the strings. I'm going to remove the strings and we're going to come back and we're going to check these inlays. And it may be possible that if I squirt some super glue, I'll tape everything up, if I squirt some super glue in there, chances are it will suck underneath um, these two inlays. Now I'm going to just press them down and they will hold. And if they do hold, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to file them smooth and flat. But if that doesn't work, which it doesn't always work, I am going to have to steam out these two inlays. This one I can file back. It's only protruding just a tiny, tiny bit. We can file that one down. But these two are the main concerns. So let me get the strings off and I will come back and show you in a little bit more detail. So here, I'm just going to zoom in, you can see that these two frets are uplifted. And to prove that, you mean, I don't know how clear you can see that. I don't want to get too close where you're going to go out of focus. I think that's as much as I can go. And I'll just take a regular screwdriver and these are normal frets. These are fine. I mean, normal inlays, but you get to these See there, it's sticking up, and there. 
and you can probably see even better if I press it down and I can press them down yeah that's quite a bit there we're talking half a millimeter there hopefully you can see so my dilemma is get some glue inside there now, I don't want to get glue over there where it's going to roll all down the side and cover the lacquer and I've got to remove it and repolish the lacquer and everything and I don't want it to get all over the fingerboard where I've got to file it off so what I'm thinking is it's likely I'm going to remove these two inlays get some epoxy in there put the inlays back in and clamp them in and I can clamp them using strips of silicon which glue doesn't stick to which I think I'm going to do because it's even been protruding at the far end as well look just realised that this one's not so bad but this one is so I'm going to steam these out I don't think I can just prise them out without using steam so I have no choice so I'm going to plug in my soldering iron or one of my soldering irons we're going to heat, get it hot we're going to get some rag over there and we're going to steam these out hopefully we're not going to damage them by getting them out but I don't really have a choice because I've just realised we're also protruding on that far side now the owner of this guitar has already said to me he's thinking of contacting the guy who bought it off and just saying look I paid you a lot of money for this guitar and it needs this work um, so I'm going to make sure the guy who sold this guitar also gets to see this video yeah this is protruding all the way along just realised screwdriver, screwdriver there so it's all the way along there so it's going to be a steam it out hopefully if we don't damage we're not damaged when I take them out I can glue them back in I'm going to use epoxy to glue them back in because it takes a while to set but it means we're going to get a good clamp we're going to get a good set in there and then I can file them over but these two we may have to replace them yeah there's no glue all the glue has come away all around it it's been this one's been held on by that corner and so is this one just held on on that corner it means there wasn't enough glue got in there so I have no choice I'm going to let the owner know what I'm doing hopefully the owner will also send I'm going to keep this little part of the video separate from the main video it will be included in the final video but I'm going to also keep it separate so we're going to get this um, a bit of copy of this video sent to the guy who sold the guitar to my client I'm just going to show that it is the correct guitar so we're going to get the serial on there hopefully hopefully you can see that serial number one three three nine two one three three eight just to show there's nothing untoward happening my name is Victor Christian I'm fret friend if you want to check me out uh, these are the two there you go but these two inlays need replacing there's also one at this end it's come a little bit loose I'm not going to steam it out I'm just going to file that down that should be okay so there you go that is my recommendations for this we get them out hopefully we can get them both back in if not we're going to have to replace the pair of them so I have done this before I just don't remember how it came out so it is possible that these could not be reusable but it's also possible and unlikely that they will be reusable we're only glued in on this far corner here so what I'm going to do is I've got to now have a wet cloth what I'm going to do is I'm not going to zoom in can't bother zooming you can see what I'm doing I'm going to take solder and we're just going to try and steam these out So hopefully we're not going to damage the inlay. I don't think we'll damage the inlay. I think we're going to be okay. And the good thing about it is if I can get them out, I can glue them back in, can't I? The hardest thing will be clamping because I'm going to have to make a radius block to get these clamped in. It's been a lot easier with the um, frets removed. Let's see if I can just get... That may have steamed... I think I steamed it back in. That would have melted the glue and steamed it back in and I think it has done. There you go, that's perfect. If I just hold that there, I've just created a brand new way to fix inlays. What that's done is, I will zoom in a little. What that has done is, that has steamed under the glue. Has it, has it come back out? Uh, it's, pushed, it's just slightly back out, but it's a lot better than it was. So let's just try and go again. If it stays in, great. If it comes out, great.
what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that in place. Give the glue time to set, hopefully. Am I happy with that? Yes, I am actually. It is protruding still just a little bit, but not not an amount that's going to worry me. I mean, these also protrude just a little bit. That will not make any difference to the playing. Let's move on to the next one. Because if these are sticking in, I'm not going to get them out anyway. So I'm just going to hold that in. Now they're still right, that's still raised up. I'm not happy with that. I want them out. And I don't think I can get them out without damaging them. Because I don't think we've got enough glue underneath to hold them in. Let me just hold them in a little while. If I think they're going to hold in, I'll pass the job off as okay. But I'm not convinced by that. No, and they're not holding in. They're not holding in. So I need to get those out, and I don't know how I'm going to get them out without damaging them. So I think we're going to have to replace those two inlays. I could not get enough purchase on these to remove them. And this is raised up again as well. So they need to come out, and I can't get them out without damaging them. So these will have to be replaced. Okay, this would not be my first choice of fix, but it does seem that I've got them stuck down properly. And I've done that is, I've got some really, really thin super glue or CA glue as most people know it. And just by dropping it at the edge of the inlay, it has fallen through the gaps. It is a process, I don't know what it's called, but it does suck itself in and under. And I'm just, Basically, I'll, I'll, I've squirted that in there and it's gone right in. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold it down. Rather than clamp it. And it should, hopefully, hold in there. And to clean it up, all I'm going to do is use a file. A small file. Just file off the excess super glue and level and flatten it. And I think this has worked. I did see this process on YouTube earlier. I think it's still just slightly lifted slightly to that side. And that looks pretty good. And all it is, wipe away any excess we've got there. And we do not have to replace it. I think this will have a little bit more super glue in there. But if it works, it works, doesn't it? And just by pressing on there, it'll create a little bit of suction to get it right into that slot. And it is working, I can see it working. And I shall wipe away the excess and I shall just press down. This one at this end I've steamed and it's gone straight back in and it stayed stuck, so that's it. So okay, this seems to have worked. The problem with this getting the inlays removed is you can't get any enough purchase on it to remove it from the top. You'd have to drill a tiny hole, get a screw in there and pull it up. Once you've screwed a hole in, I mean I have in the past repaired 
a screwing hole, but it's not perfect, and we need it because it's such a great, you know, it's a Gibson standard. They're not a cheap guitar. You don't want to do second rate repairs, you want to do proper repairs. So I would have replaced these two inlays, but I'm going to go with this, and if it holds, I'm going to obviously stick with it. I'm just going to go and get a file now. Again, a nice number two cup file here. I use this for loads. I use this for when I'm actually repairing fingerboards, when I'm doing a refret and I get some chip out, I'd, I'd, I'd use this file. And all we're going to do is, we're just going to remove the super glue with this. We're not going to cut into the binding or anything. And if I'm not happy with how that's gone, well, it makes no difference I'm happy or not. I'm just going to do this just to remove a little bit of the super glue. And what I'm going to do is, I will take a Stanley blade in a moment and I will scrape along with the grain. And you won't even know that this has been repaired. Very happy with how that's gone so far. I will now take a Stanley blade. I have a pack of little beauties here. And we are going to scrape with the grain. Just to remove that super glue. And once I've all the fingerboard up, you're not going to know that that has been repaired. So I'm going to get on with that. I'm going to get everything tidied up. I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you. I'm really pleased with that. Just need to file a little bit off the top of that inlay because it's still protruding a tiny bit. I'm going to do this off camera. This one's perfect. Uh, we're going to get the neck all oiled up. Then we're going to go and check the frets along the length of the neck, make sure we're all level. If we are, we can get on, get this guitar finished and get it back to its owner. Welcome back, guys. The guitar has been stood 10 minutes. The inlays are seated correctly. I've smoothed them off with a file and then I've sanded with the grain to make sure we're all level, which they are. They're not sticking out. All three of them that needed work have now been repaired. And I've moved on to the frets. And going across with a fret rocker, we know how it works, three frets at a time. As we go along the length, we swap over the length of this fret rocker, which has four lengths to it. So we can always do three frets. And if we get a rock, we know that the one in the middle is rocking. Listen. There's one. And we do, there's one here. Two, and one here, three. So we have three high frets. Rather than charge for an intensive setup on this, because there are only three, I'm just going to charge five pound extra per fret, which is going to save the owner a little bit of money. I've been across the whole length of the neck, or fingerboard, whichever you want to call it, and there are just those three frets that need attention. So I'm going to level these three frets, recrown them, then we can get, we can move on. We can polish all of the frets and we can treat the fingerboard with some lemon oil or mineral oil um, which will clean and treat the fingerboard and then we can get back onto the setup. So all in all, only three high frets which is fantastic. It means we've not got to do a complete fret level which saves you a bit of money. Uh, but three high inlays have been reseated, glued in and are now perfect. Then we're going to do a setup. And that will be everything done. I will come back when we're ready to get the strings back on. While I'm here, I may as well show you the lever and fret. I've just done the other two. And I'm not going to explain everything. You've seen me do this a thousand times before. So I'm going to check the fret again. You can hear it rocking. I'm going to just take a flat file, which has just been wiped. Always wipe your file. And I'm just going to follow the radius with the file. Nice easy strokes. This is a really, really sharp file. It's a number four cut, so it's a smooth, sharp Swiss made file made by Valor. But if you want to check those out, and my favourite files, they're not cheap, but they do they do the job. They are really, really sharp files. And again, so I'll just clean. Not running off yet. Nice easy strokes, just following the radius. This is something you, you pick up over the years. It's not something you can do straight away, I imagine. You, you, but you will get a feel for it. 
That feels pretty nice to me, so let's just check again. The reason it felt nice is because it's perfect. We're going to check one forward and one back to make sure we're not out of kilter with any other frets either side. And that is it, we have leveled the fret and I'm just going to use a three cornered file just to build that crown back going this way. Just a couple of strokes of the file, steady the neck, roll the file over to create that arc. Again from the opposite side, roll away from the camera to create that arc and there you go and that is the fret leveled recrowned and that is it so that guitar I mean this fingerboard is now fixed the inlays are fixed the frets are re-radiused or re leveled and re-radiused now what I need to do is I'm going to treat the fingerboard with what you know as lemon oil it is not a lemon oil at all it is a mineral oil especially formulated for rosewood and the t and that kind of ilk fingerboards uh, ebony as well we'll spray this in what i'll do is i'll lift the dirt we'll wipe it all off once that's done we'll spray it again let it soak in to treat the wood it's something you want to do every six to ten months i imagine that's what i like to do and it will treat the wood keep it um, from drying out because when it dries out it will crack and it will warp in time keep it treated i'm going to do that i'm going to polish the frets once that's done we can get the strings back on and we can get the guitar set up really really pleased with how this has gone these inlays have come out better than I thought, though I didn't think I was going to be able to glue them in, but I have done, so that is fantastic. I'm really pleased with that. Something you may have noticed as well, it's very, very light and bright in this room again now, and that is because I managed to find some 200 watt light bulbs, and uh, they came yesterday, and I can film any time of the day now. I haven't got to just film in the daytime, but anyway, moving on with this guitar, I have just finished polishing the frets and cleaning up the guitar. And let me show, there you go. The two inlays I've repaired are fifth and seventh fret. And you'll now notice that they are super smooth. They are right in. We managed to get some glue in there, super glue. It sucks itself basically underneath the inlays. I'm just holding it down a few seconds, we've got them in there. I have sanded the areas and I've sanded this way. So we removed any scratching or any lines we've got there. And these are fixed. There's also this one up here which I've also fixed. Um, I've then treated the fingerboard with some lemon oil and I've polished the frets. So this is really having the gubbins, I've cleaned the pickups as well and all these areas which, which gather dust between and beneath the strings. Uh, so I'm now ready to stick some strings back on here. This is what I'm going to do. I'm also going to remove the scratch plate which the customer or the client has requested. So I'm going to remove that now. Uh, when you see this guitar again, I will have the strings on. Uh, I will also cut the nut slots that little bit deeper using my nut slotting files. Hosco brand, very good piece of kit this, or these. Uh, I'm going to recut the nut slots, get the depth of the nut slots perfect because they are cut a little bit too high. And um, we'll get the guitar set up and it, can be, it will be ready for the owner to, well I say collect, I'm dropping it off at his place because I'm going over to Nottingham on Friday so I will be dropping this one off so next time you come back, all being well we'll have the guitar ready to go back to the owner and here we are, all done and I'm holding the guitar upside down because if I hold it that way I'm moving the headstock towards the outside window and I don't want to smash it I know we're quite far away but here you go, I'll show you the right way how's that for you? Just need to put the truss rod cover back on because I remembered I haven't because I've just seen it there. I do this all the time, all the time. So I'm going to stick that back on. So let's walk through or mention what I have done on this guitar. The last thing I've done was alter the truss rod because there was too much relief in there. It meant we had too much bend in the neck. But what I've done is I've given the guitar a complete setup with three frets leveled. I've also repaired or glued back in three raised trapezoid inlays. Uh, it's had a complete setup. Normally for this type of job, you'd be looking at 100 pounds. That'd be 75 pounds for an intensive setup with three frets dressed and 25 pounds extra for repairing the inlays, which if anything, if, if we charge for time here, um, 
I've charged a little bit less than that uh, because one I was well it's a new client I like to treat them a bit anyway I was also given a new set of strings that the owner said were in the case and he didn't want them and um, what else have I done I have removed the pick guard which I don't like a pick guard on there myself but the problem with that is you get to see the scabby holes that have been left there wherever they may be there and there not very pretty but you know it doesn't really cause a lot of trouble does it so that's it um, I have not had to cut the slots in the nut they are a tiny tiny bit higher than I would like but the guitar I believe is going to be sold on so why bother tampering with something why take it too low it is again it's a personal preference it is low enough that it when you finger an F chord or an F sharp you're not playing the note sharp because it is not too far above the first fret so I'm quite happy with how that is, is set Locking tuners are absolutely fine. I like to give them half a wrap before I lock them down. Me, stops them snapping. I do, in the past, I've had them snap when I just lock them straight on. I always put them in through the back way, then tighten them up. But that is it, the guitar is finished. It is a Les Paul standard, left-handed. It's a 2013 model, very nice guitar. Okay, the owner shouldn't have had to pay extra to get extra work done when he's just bought a new guitar in good faith. I do believe he's contacting the guy I bought the guitar from I'm just going to ask him if he's going to chip in toward the cost of this setup and repair but that is me done everything that you can do on a guitar has been done has been checked every nut and bolt has been checked for tightness that's the tuners the strap pins the pickup um, pick rings and everything the intonation has been set the radius is set anyway I've set the bridge the saddles the pickups the lot like I say, it's had three frets levelled, all of the frets have been polished, the fingerboard has been treated with lemon oil, and the guitar is ready to go. All in all, a very, very nice guitar. And when all said and done, I know what the guy paid for this, and he paid less than uh, you normally would do on the market. So he's made a, a, a very, very good saving. Even with the extra he's had to pay me, he's still made a good saving of a couple of hundred pounds of what you'd normally expect to pay. So he's done pretty well out of it, so that is it another one ready to go i'm victor christian i'm your friend you want to check me out best place to go is facebook facebook.com forward slash ng17 that is facebook.com forward slash n-g-o-n-e-s-e-v-e-n so that's it boys and girls so until the next time as always be good to each other and i'll see you soon